millions of Game of Thrones fans love to get together to argue who's the most powerful character in the epic fantasy series. There's no shortage of those who back Arya Stark, who's risen among the ranks of power in the Westeros Kingdom conflict. And quite a few would vote for the Dragon Lady herself, Daenerys Targaryen. And then there's a following that continuously fawns over Jon Snow, who came back from the dead to become a contender for the Iron Throne. But the real force is the man who pulls all the strings in the fantasy saga, namely its creator, George R. R. Martin. And what's also less known is how he spends all of his money. Before we tell all you Game of Thrones fans everything about how George R. R. Martin spends his millions, make sure to like this video, subscribe to The Richest, and join our notification squad. Before George R. R. Martin struck it rich, documenting the mythical sweepstakes surrounding the fate of the Kingdom of Westeros, he was a struggling writer like everyone else in the trade. He earned enough to write a few short stories, create a series of sci-fi books titled Wildcard, and even did screenplays for such 80s TV shows like Beauty and the Beast and the resurrected suspense offerings The Outer Limits and The Twilight Zone. After Martin sold his rights to another series of books called Songs of Fire and Ice in 2007, he invested a lot of hope that the works would be adapted into a fantasy series called Game of Thrones. Those hopes were realized four years later when the show became a huge hit on HBO. Because of the success of the show as well as gigantic copy sales of the Songs of Fire and Ice series, Martin is easily worth $65 million. That also includes his consultation services on the series and scripting for at least three Game of Thrones video games. Expect that tally to get even larger with news earlier this year surrounding a prequel to the massively popular show. But by all accounts, Martin is a pretty frugal person. He's made it obvious to fans that writing is what he loves to do best regardless of the paycheck. And besides, at the mature age of 70, he's endured a pretty lengthy period as a low-income author, constantly aware that splurging those riches could easily land him in the poorhouse once again. Despite all the wealth and worldwide recognition as one of the richest writers on the planet, Martin still lives in a four-bedroom adobe-colored home in Santa Fe, New Mexico that's worth almost $450,000. He's also avoided the urge to get a Ferrari or a Mercedes, choosing to drive around in an old Mazda RX-7, although his vanity license plate does read GRRM. But it's across the street from the Martin residence where Martin injected some of his wealth. It's what he calls his office tower, where his staff of up to five assistants work and where a massive collection of books and a great deal of Game of Thrones memorabilia is housed. But the crowning touch that's evident around the house are the elaborate stained glass windows. They're not religious in any way, although there's probably no shortage of fans around to worship them. In fact, the windows are coat of arms designs of the seven warring family kingdoms from Game of Thrones. Five of them are in Martin's personal study and they all make bold statements when sunshine meets glass. There's the moon and falcon of the Aaron family and the deadly golden kraken that's symbol of the Greyjoy clan. The Lannister is represented by a bold golden lion, while the Stark window features the telltale grey wolf. As for the Targaryens, it's fitting that a three-headed dragon represents that kingdom. All of the designs were creations by Spin Dunbar, who ensured they were crafted as closely as possible to Martin's specifications. And while Martin won't disclose the cost of that deal, chances are they'll certainly add some curb appeal to the property, worth nearly half a million. But with Martin's legacy, not to mention the throne's innovations, who wants to bet the value of his office digs will simply skyrocket? Beyond the renovations that created his office tower space, however, it's apparent that Martin prefers to spend money to benefit others, most of them residing in his city. In 2016, the writer allegedly shelled out $3.5 million to benefit an artistic collective called Wolf Mew. Thanks to Martin's contribution as well as a $2.5 million Kickstarter campaign, the visual arts group has a home in what used to be a bowling alley. With 20,000 square feet of floor space, the building houses a number of giant installations, exhibition space for other visual artworks, workshop and education programs, a ceramic studio and a section for live music. It's also home to 45 artists who double as employees to maintain the space. 
And while Martin owns the building, he's apparently leasing it to the artists at a rate that won't hurt the wallets of those who occupy it. While we mostly associate Martin with the literary community, which isn't as well known about him is that he's a huge movie buff, since he did write screenplays during his Hollywood days. But back in 2006, Martin was helpless to save the venerable Jean Cocteau Theatre, a venue for foreign and independent cinema which was shut down in Santa Fe that year. Four years later, taking some of his earnings from the HBO deal he made, he purchased the 123-seat theater for an undisclosed amount of money. He also footed the bill for its extensive renovations until it was in prime shape to be reopened in 2013. During opening week, the Cocteau enjoyed a grand turnout with Martin and a White Wolf hosting the proceedings. Evenings featured marathon screenings of Game of Thrones episodes, paraphernalia from the show for sale in the lobby, as well as copies of Martin's books also made available. During renovations, Martin ensured that art from local painters adorned the interior walls. The Cocteau is still enjoying its rebirth, screening some of the most popular independent and foreign films out there. In 2017, Martin once again opened his wallet to fund another movie venture, this time a studio space occupying a building that once housed a biotech company. Dubbed Stagecoach, the venture which was designed to be non-profit was to be a training ground for emerging filmmakers in the Santa Fe area. And besides housing facilities for local independent filmmakers, editors and digital media mavens to create works, it would also be available as a production space for Hollywood efforts shooting in Santa Fe. Martin, when he opened the studio, hoped that those established filmmakers would rub shoulders with local upstarts to provide advice and networking opportunities to create a more vibrant local film community. The space was reportedly used by the Oscar-winning film team of Joel and Ethan Cohen, who were in town at one point to shoot their western, The Ballad of Buster Scruggs. There's a good reason why Martin loves Santa Fe. The city once had a vibrant art scene back in 1979, which inspired the writer when he relocated to the New Mexico City. But with a series of economic downturns hitting Santa Fe hard over the years, Martin was depressed over how younger artists were leaving in droves because of dwindling creative opportunities. Realizing that the city was about to lose much of a generation that could otherwise maintain the vitalization that attracted him in the first place, Martin didn't want to see the scene dissolve into dust. The last thing he wanted to see was a city lockup after 9 p.m., leaving residents with nothing to do. Naturally, all that Santa Fe philanthropy has come at the expense of writing additional follow-ups to his Song of Fire and Ice. At least two books in the series experience delays, while HBO executives have become fraught with worry over how Game of Thrones could continue without the material needed from additional book releases. But the last people to complain has been the artistic community of Santa Fe. Martin's philanthropy doesn't end at bolstering the cultural sector of his favorite American city. The writer is also an animal lover, especially wolves, which explains the presence of Ghost, the dire wolf that's also charmed Game of Thrones viewers with its brief cameos throughout the series. His fascination for wolves and consideration for their welfare were among the reasons why Martin has taken it on himself to support the Wild Spirit Wolf Sanctuary a nonprofit organization in New Mexico. The sanctuary currently houses roughly 60 wolves and wolf dogs who were rescued from abusive owners. Martin's dedication to the sanctuary includes creating Kickstarter drives to provide the organization more funding. But when Martin's in a party mood, which is almost always whenever he's on the fantasy circuit, he's just as generous towards his fans. It's especially a highlight to catch Martin at Worldcon, the international science fiction convention that's been going on for decades. Martin's hosted the convention several times, and when it was held in San Jose last August, the writer even splurged for an after-party for hordes of his fans. We don't know if he footed the bill for everyone's tab, but we do know that he paid Daft Punk to entertain the masses that night. For an author whose wealth makes him one of the most successful writers alive today, he has every reason to celebrate and indulge himself. But his humble upbringing and early struggles at the literary craft have kept the author down to earth, which might be what you need if much of what you're writing about involves a great deal of blood, gore, and flying, fire-breathing dragons. And here's where we close the book on how George R.R. Martin spends his millions. 
Which of his expenditures surprised you the most? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to The Richest.